Hello, Property Nomads. Hope you're well. Financial Fitness 2024, Building Wealth and Security. Uh, this episode, we are going to cover things that we think that you should be doing this year, and not just planning for this year, but in years to come as well. The one caveat that we will say before we crack on is we are not independent financial advisors. Please do not take any of this as financial advice. We can only tell you what we're doing and what we see coming down the road and what our plans are moving forwards. As always, we would urge you to always do your own homework and make the decisions that work for you. So we're not IFAs. Please don't go and take this as financial advice because it is not aimed to be financial advice in any way. Looking at financial fitness in 2024, building wealth and security. Well, from a property point of view, uh, we can look at this two ways. Let's make, I'm going to make two assumptions here. Number one, let's make an assumption that you have no property whatsoever. Then maybe a first step to building wealth and security is to go out there this year and acquire some property. That might be a couple of buy to lets. You might be fortunate enough to joint venture with someone that's got a lot of capital and you might just go and buy a block of flats or something like that. If you haven't got property, you listen to this, you've got nothing, no property, um, but maybe you've got a bit of cash or maybe you know people that have got a bit of cash, then do your networking, speak to people and get some training done, listen to books, you know, we've or listen to audio books like we've got, or read our books, uh, listen to podcasts, all of that sort of stuff. Get yourself going. Get yourself going and get your aim of at least acquiring your first couple of properties to give you a baseline. As always, get your power team involved, create your power team, and do what works for you. Assumption number two is that maybe you are like Aaron and myself. Maybe you've got a a, a, de a decent buy to let portfolio and that's your baseline so you've got your baseline covered and you're looking to push and progress to the next level maybe you start looking at developments maybe you start looking at other forms of property income that could be through different strategies that could be through running uh, training and mentoring business that could be through doing site visits. So people pay to go to site visits with yourself. Maybe that could be through operating a podcast that may be a subscription-based service that people pay for. And, you know, that's another stream of income. And again, we're looking at building multiple streams of income through property. So assuming you've got a base level of a buy to let portfolio, these are things that you might want to do to, to move forward. So from a property point of view, yes, as we've said before, there, there's a lot of things that are potentially coming down the line. There's changes in building regulations, planning regulations, permitted development rights. There are scary things bubbling in the commercial property space, which could lead to... Uh, a gargantuan amount of opportunity moving forward. So th these are things that could happen that are on the horizon that you, you would want to take advantage of. So from a property point of view, let's just recap. We're looking at assumption number one, that you have no property. Then in order to start building your wealth and security, it's probably a good idea that you start looking at acquiring property and how you do that, uh, who you do that with again uh, listen to your podcast read your books listen to books as well D do a little bit of property training get your knowledge out there do some networking assumption number two in property is that you have a, a baseline of a portfolio like Aaron and myself do and that you are looking to diversify you're looking to go into doing other property strategies uh, generating chunks of income you might be looking at uh, doing a, a property mentoring program. Again, these are things that we've bandaged around as well. We might be looking at doing site visits. And again, we can get 
people to pay to come on to site visits with us so we can explain the project and, and give you the ins and outs and access to the power team, whatever that might be. It, it could be monetizing the podcast, which we're looking to do as well. It could be growing um, social media, like we're growing the YouTube channel and, and, and even Instagram with all the, you know, the projects that are going on at the moment. And again, that as you build more and you build bigger and you build better, that can generate its own income. Flipping the switch slightly, uh, and again, as we do sometimes, is let's not look at property. So let's take property out of the equation. OK, so we've just dealt with property. Now we're going to deal with other aspects of financial fitness. So how do you make yourself more resilient in, in these times? As we've said time and time again, that we've had a dark couple of years and we are going to have a certainly a, some more dark years coming ahead, but for various reasons that we don't need to go into again. But we have said that what people should be looking at, and again, none of this is independent financial advice, do your own homework, do your own research, do what works for you. But if we look at all the economic stuff that's been happening, all the currency printing that's been happening, and the fact that no fiat currency has ever survived, it, the success rate is zero because they all go bust at some point. Things that you might want to look at is you might want to look at proper money. You might want to look at gold and silver. Why? Uh, gold is a, is, is a bastion for a, a number of reasons. We've done a podcast episode recently uh, about Poland and the central bank buying gold. And the reason for that is that the EU is making murmurs that there could be a new gold standard ahead. If there's a new gold standard and there's a new system regime, that could increase the, the price of gold. Substantially so. That might be something you want to look into. Gold is an inflation hedge. Gold is a, a barbarous relic, uh, as a, you know, may or may not have been said by uh, kings back in the day. It's got a lot of qualities. Silver, on the other hand, also has a lot of qualities, but a lot of different qualities. Silver is used for a lot of consumption. It's used for solar panels, wind turbines, uh, used for a lot of defense mechanisms. Uh, and again, with the scary things that have happened the last few years and that are happening moving forward, you might decide that owning some physical metal and some physical money is a very good thing to do. Yes, you won't get a dividend yield from it, but the capital appreciation might work in your favor moving forwards. And that is building a level of wealth. That is building an extra level of security. That's the purpose of this episode. You might decide that you want to go and invest in the stock market. You might decide that, actually, hang on a minute, the energy sector is unloved. Um, it's going to possibly boom in the next five or 10 years because we've got increasing levels of energy scarcity. We have got also a lot of companies, not just in the UK, but worldwide, that have a good solid business base that might provide a dividend for me. I might go and invest in, in high yield dividend stocks in the energy sector. Again, do your own homework on that. If it's going to provide a secondary income or you're able to compound that, then maybe that's worth doing. But the stock market will have its ups and downs. And I'm a believer that the stock market is going to go boom this year, uh, as in not a good boom. It's not going to boom to the upside. It's going to stealth combust, basically. And when that happens, that creates big opportunities. It creates uh, opportunities to short the market. It creates opportunities to certainly buy at that dip or very near the bottom because once it goes down, it will come back up. So there's opportunities there. And again, I'm saying the energy sector, because if you have a belief that gold and silver will increase, then from a mining point of view, that is just going to add to the bottom line of mining companies. That's going to make mining companies look even more favorable. That will mean in an ideal world that the price of mining shares will substantially increase. There's a lot of people out there saying the same thing. Again, you should do your own homework on this. Maybe if you're if you've got that risk tolerance or you're 
you like a little bit of risk, maybe that's something you should do because the risk reward is more than likely skewed in your favor if you're to invest in mining companies. Other ways that you could build wealth and security. A lot of people, a lot of doomsday planners, and I could be a bit of one myself. Maybe you might want to acquire land. Uh, maybe that land has a water source. Maybe that land has a food source, or you've got an area where you can, uh, I was going to say grow your own cows, but that's that's not the right term of uh, phrase, is it? Uh, maybe you can have your own livestock. Maybe you can then have your own food sources. Because if the world does get plunged into darkness, uh, but you've got your own water source, you've got your own heat, you've got your own power source, you've got your own food source, you might find that incredibly useful moving forward. And, and that is a level of security that a lot of other people won't have. So potentially buying land is a good idea. Uh, buying your own food sources is a good idea. Making sure you're as energy, as energy efficient as possible is a good idea as well. That will provide you with a level of security. Also, to be fair, you could then sell excess food and, and milk and so forth to other people. And that could also bring you in a different level of income. Building wealth and security, uh, not necessarily financial fitness per se, but certainly having a macroeconomic plan B is very, very useful. This could be in the terms of having a secondary passport. This could be in the terms of having a secondary residency permit. I am fortunate enough to have a temporary, at the time of recording, having a temporary residency permit for Mexico. I intend in using that to its capabilities at some point in the future. Uh, of course, I have my UK passport. I and therefore, you know, I'm, I'm a UK resident, but I have option B there if push comes to shove or if something drastic happens here in the UK, I can go to Mexico and happy days. So I've got that plan B. I haven't got all my eggs in a UK basket. Maybe you should look at that as well. Do you have, I don't know, um, heritage from your, your mother or your father? or from your parents in, in general, um, maybe your grandparents. Maybe you could apply for, I don't know, maybe one of your grandparents has Brazilian heritage. Maybe you can apply for Brazilian passport. If you can, I would urge looking at getting that done sooner rather than later. Purely because that can have long lasting effects. But going back to Financial Fitness 2024, going back to building wealth and security, let's recap everything. Let's look at property again. If you haven't got any property, get started in property. If you have already got property and you've got a, a buy-to-let portfolio, for example, look at expanding on that. Look at doing a new strategy. Look at generating chunks of cash. Maybe look at monetizing your podcast. Maybe look at monetizing your books. Maybe look at uh, doing mentoring, training, all of those sorts of things. Look at new property strategies. Outside of property or, again, complementary to property, these are things that you can do at the same time. Maybe you want to look at the stock market. Maybe you want to look at investing in unloved areas, contrarian areas. Maybe that area is energy. Are there energy stocks out there that provide a dividend and a yield that you can uh, piggyback on? Maybe there are mining stocks out there, a completely unloved sector at the moment that has the potential to go absolutely bonkers should everything happen that probably will happen. Maybe you should look at gold itself. Uh, by, by the way, I should caveat that when you're talking about gold and silver, I'm talking about the physical money itself. Not talking about ETFs not talking about exchange traded funds, We're not talking about owning part of a bit of gold or investing in any of that paper gold as such. We are talking about owning the physical metal itself. There are a lot of advantages to doing that. And, and again, uh, I'll probably do another episode on that in due course. But looking at owning the physical gold and the physical silver itself that has a lot of advantages for you moving forward. Maybe 
building wealth and security is looking at buying a plot of land for yourself. Maybe it's building your own home. Maybe it's becoming as energy efficient as possible, putting solar panels on. Maybe you want to go down the heat source pump route. Maybe you want to have that reservoir. Do you have a body of water that you can have your own water source? Do you have land to grow your own food? Because if it all goes dark and the lights do get turned off, but you've got your own, your, uh, you've got your own uh, energy efficiency, you've got your water source, you've got your food source, that provides you a wonderful base layer for you and your family moving forward. So when we look at financial fitness in 2024, we need to be looking at property. We need to be looking at gold. We need to be looking at silver. We need to be looking at the stock market. We need to be looking at things that are underloved, things that are contrarian, things that you can invest into that are going to provide you a return. Because the more income that you have coming in, the more passive income that you have coming in, the better the investment decisions that you can make, that is going to help you move forward. The underlying thesis of all of this is please do not put all of your eggs in one basket. Have multiple income streams, have multiple property income streams, have multiple income streams that include property, that include things on the stock market, that include all sorts of other things, maybe even a side hustle, maybe an Amazon business, e-commerce, whatever it might be. There are loads of things that you can do to help to prepare yourself, to help your family, to help your loved ones move forward and that's the purpose of this episode these are all things that Aaron and I are looking into as well these are all things that Aaron and I do and again for the final time I'll caveat this episode and say none of this is financial advice you must always do your own homework you must always do your research on these topics by the way if you're interested in property you want to get kick-started in property and you need a mentor you're after a mentor we are offering that for 2024 please email me rob at tpnpodcast.com we will help you get kick-started in property we will help you grow as we grow at the same time rob at tpnpodcast.com just put mentoring in the subject headline we will help you where we can all of that being said, please do go and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already done so and uh, check out Property Nomads YouTube channel and go and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. There is your financial fitness 2024, building wealth and security. Plenty of homework for you to go away, plenty of things for you to ponder. Ultimately, do what is right for you and your circumstances. Thank you very much and see you in the next episode.